Hey guys, Tyler Fionn Fire Erzberger here with Show Stopper, your weekly talk show for Valorant. As you can tell, uh, my lovely co host, Yinsu Collins, is not here this week. That's because she's in Berlin hosting the VCT Berlin Masters. But we're not, we're, we, we have to give you a show. I mean, you're expecting a show. We, we have to discuss VC Tier Berlin as it's going on. We'll have Yinsu back once the tournament is over to go out over everything that's happening. But luckily, I have two very special guests with me today to discuss everything going on at Masters. First off, someone who is, uh, you know, not a stranger to the official Riot broadcast in EU. It's one of the best analysts in Europe for Valorant. It's Ryan Central. I tried to be. I tried to be. It's it's not been the, the best couple of days for oh, EMEA yeah. at the time uh, of recording, so I'm sure we're going to be talking about that a little bit. I can't wait. Uh, <laughs> may, maybe someone who's a bit happier with the results currently going on at Berlin. We have contributing writer at Upcomer River Valley and an arising expert in the scene. It's Danny Appleford. Hey, guys. Yeah, new to Showstopper. I, I probably won't be as good as Yinsu, but I, I'll try my best. At least you're not at a region that's not getting a first seed, Danny. At least you're not in a region who's not getting a first seed. Exactly. Sorry, Ryan. Sorry, Ryan. Sorry. Oh, we'll keep we'll keep we'll keep the trolling to the EU to a minimum because it's still a long ways to go. This is only the mid tournament episode. I'm sure once the tournament ends, things might get a little bit hairy for North America and Korea. But to start off, we're gonna go through some mid tournament superlatives here. Ryan, I want to start with you. First question, best player of the tournament. There's so many good ones. I've basically been doing what you've done in the past when it comes to like tracking people's yeah. ACSs every day on a daily basis. Sorry for stealing that, by the way. No, but no, it's, no, it's great. It, it, it's cool to see players like Forsaken um, be able to show up for teams like PaperX when it's needed. Heat's been showing up as well for Vivo Keed. It's nice to see those god-tier players from each of the different regions actually show up on an international stage. There's the obvious ones like Tens, Shazam, CNED, but I think the player that sort of impressed me the most, that's made me think, okay, he's on the upper echelon of players, is Ethan for 100 Thieves. Mm. I think when he moved over from CS, he was one of the more well-known players that moved from Counter-Strike over to Valorant in a pretty nascent period still. He now shows exactly why people were hyping about him. He was a terrific player for NA and CS, and now we're seeing how good he is in Valorant as well. It was a bit of a slow start, but pairing him up with the Sky in a meta that Sky's really good on has been a match made in heaven, and 100 Thieves have really pushed that issue as much as they possibly can, and that's why they beat Gambit, I think. Danny, who's your player? You, I think you kind of stole Ryan, my, my Ethan pick. Oh. I mean, uh. Ethan, I think, has been like up there with Asuna for, for a while now, especially on that Sky pick, like you said. I don't know. I think I don't want to take the easy way out and say tens, even though he did just like absolutely carry his team um, <laughs> against F4Q. I think I'm going to say Heat. Because uh, unfortunately, Vivo Keat has not been doing the best, but you look at the leaderboards every single day and, and Heat is is up there with the best of the best, including Tens. So I think Heat's my my player. Yeah, Heat versus Ye was a sight to behold. And I think uh, even though Brazil still, I think they're 3-12 and overall in both Master Tournaments and they're struggling a bit. Uh, I, I do believe that Heat has been one of the stand-up performers for me. Uh, yeah, and I think Ethan's a very trendy pick. I think it's for the smart, the intellectuals out there really are on the, the Ethan hype train. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at Vision Strikers. I'm going to go with RB. I think RB was one of the best Jet players in South Korea. And now with the inclusion of Buzz, he's had to switch over to the Sky and the Sova, play a more flex role, and I think he's been excellent. And Vision Strikers' handling of Ascend was probably one of the biggest, probably the the most impressive victory of any team so far in Berlin. Yeah, I, I think there's been a lot of players that have done similar stuff, right? Of just they've been the main duelist, but a new player's come in, so they've had to play more supportive stuff. Like Shazam, he was initially on Jet with Sentinels. He still plays it, but he's mostly over on the Silver to let Tens be the main duelist. I think of Durka for Fnatic and Doma backing up as well to let that player shine. I think that seeing that has been a good thing, but the fact the Buzz has come in and just absolutely tall through Gambit, and uh, Gambit, Ascend even, was... Really surprising more than anything. I think Ascend didn't really think the Vision Strikers were maybe up to the challenge because Ascend, when they went into that server on that game, they didn't really know what to expect, which 
it was really good for vision strikers to keep their strategies hidden. And they even said that they're holding on to Lackier for the latter parts of the tournament. They're not going to show off one of their style players until they get into the playoffs, which start on Friday, I think. So it's been great to see teams evolve and players go. I used to be a top tier player. Mixwell as well is a great one of just, I used to be a duelist. Now I'm going to let the young, talented people come through and I'm going to support those. It's a real nice sort of carrying the torch for a lot of teams and none better than Abby. Yeah, I think for uh, Korea, a, a bunch of people kind of had, you know, their heads turned when they're like, where's Lockia? Where's Lockia? And they're like, oh, he, we got him locked up in the back. He, he's not ready to come out yet. We're, we're saving his power. So, I mean, Vision Strikers have looked really good so far, and I'm, I'm actually kind of scared for NA and EMEA to see uh, the full Vision Strikers roster. Let's move on to our second award, Ryan. What's the, been the biggest surprise for you so far, the tournament player, team, tournament itself in terms of production? Like, what surprised you the most through the first, you know, four or five days, the mid, you know, the midpoint of Berlin? I think for me, it's been the first series against Supermassive Blaze and Ascend. I was quite surprised that Supermassive Blaze couldn't keep up, considering like in the qualification matches in the EMEA playoffs, it was Supermassive Blaze to beat Ascend, right? So it was a... Uh, uh, expected that Supermassive Blaze might have a bit of an advantage, but not only did Ascend come back and win that series, they won it pretty handedly. So I'm really curious to see how SMB do in their like elimination match in the next coming days. I think the big one's been Vision Strikers, though. Mm -hmm. I know most people expected the Korean team to come in and surprise. People have wanted to see it ever since the closed beta, it feels like. This is how long this Vision Strikers team has been a scary dominant force in Korea. I come from Overwatch, so Korea is, you know, the big region where a lot of this talent comes from. But I'm quite surprised that the region, including F4Q, have actually come in to do some some pretty nasty work. I think F4Q, whilst they've lost both of their games against Sentinels and G2, there's potential there in the future. And I think if they can put players like Bunny in a position to succeed, the whole region is going to boom, I think, and in a good way, not like mentally boom like EMEA, but like <laughs> boom and thrive. And that's what I want to see from Korea because I think its relationship with Valorant and Riot is not as big as expected maybe in yeah. some people's eyes, but I think this is a huge step to get more gauge and interest in the scene overall. Yeah, I think Vision really? Strikers are the kind of the sort of obvious answer, um, especially with... You know, they went on that huge winning streak and then didn't make it to Masters 2 and kind of imploded a little bit towards the end. And so now we're finally getting to see them on land and international. But for me, I think it's I think it's Gambit. Uh, I'm so excited to see Gambit play another team because, I mean, they took hundred they really should have won that game against they should have won that game they should have won that game they looked no godly losing that they looked uh, godly it's... for a map and a half they looked unbeatable yes yeah, that's yeah. that's typical gambit though. Yeah. that is that is the most gambit thing that can happen i even predicted 100 thieves for that reason i didn't expect 100 thieves to look as good as they did as well that was another impressive thing because i thought that their composition it really struggled against Gambit in that first series, oh, and it's yeah. just, it just felt like if like Pokemon is just water beats fire every time kind of thing. But 100 Thieves just had the, the mental fortitude to push on, and we know how rough Gambit's mental can be when it comes to having a lead like that, especially on Icebox. They almost lost against Liquid to even qualify here, so it is the most Gambit thing to ever happen, so it came as no surprise to me, unfortunately. Yeah, I, th I think Gambit can just go so much farther. I mean, I'm predicting that they still make it to playoffs, um, and I'm just really excited to see them play a team that's not 100 Thieves, because I think 100 Thieves totally pulled that out of nowhere to beat Gambit, and um, I don't know. I think Gambit versus Sentinels would be a really good matchup. Oh, I just hope that's not a first. Or that, I, I want to see that matchup, but I just hope it's not a quarterfinal matchup, because Sentinels are most likely getting first, and mm -hmm. Gambit's most likely getting second. I hope they can at least stave off until the semifinals <laughs> because I think Gambit's definitely at least a semifinal team. For me, my biggest I surprise might be a bit shocking because I am a North American homer and everyone knows it, but Envy. And it sounds weird, right? Because they're 4 now, top of the group, haven't dropped a map, but I was expecting a little bit more. Like, I was expecting maybe a cleaner team. It does, I mean... Don't get me wrong. They've had some impressively dominant maps, but it seems like they get off to a slow start on Icebox, both, you know, versus Vivo Keed and then versus Crew. And it's like, 
if they want to be the team they they believe they can be, the the reason why they got yeah, the reason why they got Marv, they have all the talent in the world to be a Gambit or a Sentinels and be a championship team. But right now, it does feel like their ceiling would be a close quarterfinals, a semifinal finish because. You can get off to a slow start versus Crew or Zaya Division or Vivo Keed, and you can win just through pure talent. You can win through Yay doing crazy Yay El Diablo things. But if you play against Ascend, Vision Striker, Sentinels, Hunter Thieves, damn it, these tier one world class teams, it's not going to fly. No, I don't. I don't think so at all. I think Envy need to. Envy is such a hard team because Envy can pop off, especially if, you know, Ye gets going, especially recently. But they're also just a team that can, I, I think, implode a little bit, like Tyler said, uh, against some of the, the the top teams. It's almost a bit unfair because they haven't, like, dropped a map. But mm. I think the reason why a lot of people are very hard on them is they were given the group of life. It was not a scary group. There was no EMEA teams in there to make it competitive. You've got Crew and Vivo Keed, which I think, to be honest, have been better than expected. I think they've both performed decently. I don't think it's kind of like playoff material, but it's not complete trash tier like some of the teams that we have seen play. But it's still, you expect Envy to be popping off, but... Just getting the, the land jitters out of the way, I think, is a good thing. It's super likely, depending on if Ascend, Gambit, and G2 qualify out of their groups, that we're going to get a lot of uh, EMEA versus NA games for the quarterfinals, which I've, I think it's a guarantee at this point, right? Because we have three teams looking likely from NA to be top seed in their group and EMEA not being able to be a top seed of any of the groups. So that's going to be really interesting. And like you sort of mentioned, it's a single limb for playoffs. Envy now don't have a safety net behind yeah. them. So I wonder how they'll do then. Yeah, I mean, I think if you look at it, if in a, in a world where Vision Strikers get the second seed in Envy's group, let's say it's Vision Strikers versus Vivo Keed, all three other quarterfinal matches have to be NA versus EMEA, essentially, if, you know, chalk holds, right? So... We might really have, you know, the ultimate EMEA versus NA rock fight in the corner finals. And even though NA would have all three number one seeds, I would not be confident if it's a Gambit versus Envy right now. Like, even right. though Gambit lost, even though Ascend lost, I don't think NA is, uh, is unflappable. I do think right now, I, I think it's in, it, it would be unfair to say they aren't the strongest region. I think if you just look at the records, they, they just have been so good in just terms of map wins over every other region and master so far, but it, it's too close to call. I think Sentinels, I still give them the benefit of the doubt as the best team in the world. I think we've seen when they can turn it on, like versus F4, Q1, Breeze, uh, the Haven map versus G2, when they really turn it on, they're still untouchable, really, I think in, in my beliefs, but Gambit, Ascend, Vision Strikers, these are all matches that are going to push them much harder than I think Fnatic did in Iceland. Let's go to topic number three, our third award. So I think coming into this tournament, if you looked at almost every single power ranking, there were the top eight teams. So NA, EMEA, plus Vision Strikers. Those were the top eight. And then everyone else, bottom eight, you know, those were, you know, the, the underdogs, essentially. Of those eight underdog teams, which one has been the most fun to watch? Which, which underdog team have you kind of adopted as your own? Danny, we'll start with you. It's crew for me. Yeah. Uh, Crew are such uh, like a, a vocal team. I mean, you're they're you know yelling all the time after a clutch. You know the vamos. <laughs> uh, they're they're definitely my favorite team to watch. I think it's just because of the atmosphere they have around them, and I also think uh, you know they they didn't perform the best at Iceland, but they've definitely I think shown that they can perform at least a little bit um, in in Berlin. So I I think I've adopted them as my own. Uh, they've got some crazy jerseys too. Those the, that pink jersey is insane. So yeah, they're they're my team. Quintessentially the best team from Latam as well, being in the international events twice, which is nice because we're seeing them at Champions. We'll see them a third time at this year. I think it's F4Q for me. I think mm. it's just 
I feel that we should like get rescind the the stream team that they're sort of known mm. as because that's how they form. Like they're clearly more. These are professional players that used to play in the Overwatch League with like Zumba and Bunny, and both of them have shown that they can be amazing in Valorant because they are playing it like it's Overwatch. Especially Bunny jumping around and judging people. Even Dapper was struggling with it to an extent. The setup play was really nice. I think Zumba's one of the best Astros in the world. You can tell how cerebral he is. With how he used his stuff. There was a round where Nuki, when they were playing up against G2, he was going to rush down mid on bind like A main with a showstopper, you know, apt for the name of the show. <laughs> and Zumba just had a, a, a start in every place that uh, Nuki could jump out of with his ultimate. And he jumps out with a showstopper planned. He gets caught in the gravity well and he can't do anything with the ultimate. So it's moments like that where you look at FOQ and you go, actually, you could be on par the same level as somebody like Newton. FRQ could easily qualify out of the APAC last chance qualifiers if they don't make it uh, above Vision Strikers, which isn't likely. I don't think it's possible anymore. Vision Strikers are 100% confirmed for champions. champions. Now for FRQ, it's just try and get those top spots, try and take it away from Dam 1 and show that Korea is the best region in APAC. I think they can beat Newton, and I still think FRQ can make it to champions at the end of the year. Yeah, I think both those are are, are good choices. I, I... I was thinking about F4Q, but since Ryan took them, I'll go with Zeta Division. I love the guys. I mean, you just have to love them. I mean, the Japanese region has been on fire in terms of viewership. Over 200K just from Japan alone tuned in yeah, yeah. For, their, for their initial match versus crew. And no offense to, to Crazy Raccoon, but after watching Crazy Raccoon play Gambit, and then the first, I believe, like six or seven rounds versus... Uh, their opening match versus crew, it felt like Japan was the laughing stock. It really did feel like Japan was going to just get 13-1, 13-2, 13-1'd out, both teams, embarrassed. You know, you'd have Reddit threads calling for their seeds to be revoked. And I'm just really happy that that Zeta Division took a map versus crew and they pushed crew. They they played them. It was a it was a slug fest. It was a very exciting yeah, back yeah. and forth game. And, and though I think and I think if you watch Zeta Division play, it's like they're they're like so close, like months away. Like if you give them a, a bit more practice, if you put them in Korea, if they could practice with a Damwon or a New Turn or an F4Q or uh, you know you know a Vision Strikers and play against those teams more consistently and get those reps in, except you know besides a few scrims here or there, I really think they could be you know, a very good team, a team that could possibly qualify out of a, of a playoff spot one day because you watch their lineups with Breach and you see these kind of combinations they have in mind and they're so close to being perfect, like Vision Strikers, but unlike Vision Strikers where everything is synchronized to a point, they, you know, when you're talking about F4Q and their, uh, you know, the sucks into kind of the, the bunny satchel plays that are kind of renowned for those two teams, like, they division are doing those plays, but they're a hair off. And you see that with these flies, uh, you know, sky flashes into, you know, jet dashes. And they're so close, but there's off by a mark. The talents there, Laz, uh, Laz and Takage are world-class players, in my opinion. Like their aim, their experience, and Counter-Strike, just all around those two players are world-class players. It just feels like they're just missing that extra edge to them, that extra preparation to really put it all together, to have them be better than a crew or a Vivo Key, who I think are just a bit more cohesive in their play and just have a bit more earned deeper regions who are playing its better teams more consistently. So for me, Zaya Division, I love them. Uh, I just want to see the Japanese regions succeed because, you know, more viewership for the game never hurts. And it's always awesome to see a budding region just... Just, just get better and better and better. And when you when you see a country just kind of adopt a game that you're watching and they just have so much fun with it, you want them to have a team that can actually contend, right? I'm sure, Japan might not produce a championship team for a few years, if ever, but it's awesome to see the progression from the first Iceland tournament where Crazy Raccoon got embarrassed, uh-huh. and then this tournament where Zaya Division won a map, it got them hyped. You see all the co-streamers, you see all the streamers just so proud of that team. So it's an all-Japanese team team, too, so uh, I'm sure there's a lot of pride back in Japan. All right, we talked about players, we talked about surprises. This one might be a bit simple, so 
whoever gets the first answer, you get the match. Because I think there's a the, – the, the category's favorite match. And I think there's one match that stands out among the rest. So whoever gets it first gets to say it. I'll give it to you, Danny, because I think <laughs> I can hear you snickering because I feel like you know what the match is. So, Danny, what's been your favorite match of the tournament? Gambit versus 100 Thieves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah it's, I think it was everyone's. Uh, it was yeah. definitely by far the best matchup because, I mean, you you had, you know, 100 Thieves fans. It's like, oh, God, they're going to get 2 0 against an EMA team. What is this? They're, they didn't they didn't look good. They weren't making the same plays that they were usually. And then all of a sudden, they go on a 10-round win streak to pull it back on Icebox. And you're like, okay, we can pump the brakes on the panic train. And then they get into, oh, I forget what they split. I think they played split, right? Is their last map? Uh, yeah, and, it was split. And they pulled through on that. I, it was close. I mean, 10-13 mm. is not a, a stomp by any means, but it, it just, I think it made everyone feel good on the inside to, maybe not EMEA fans, sorry, Ryan, but um, to to see them pull it back. And, you know, it's it's Hiko, it's mm. Nitro, it's it's Steel. They, they have the LAN experience. They haven't been on a LAN in so long that they can finally show that we have the ice. We, we can do this. We, we don't care how long you've been playing, how good you are in your region, we, we can bring these back. Ice in the veins. I mean, yeah, and I think that's another reason. That's one of the reasons why it was so fun for, for I think, everyone watching, right, is it was high-tier Valorant, two of the best teams in the world, and there are just so many clutch moments. And, I mean, when, when, when you call them the thieves, you can say, I think it's apt to say they stole that series. They stole oh, yeah. it away from Gambit. Like, Kiko stole that series away from the clutches he had, not only once on Icebox, the classic one where – Every every caster and every language went crazy on the one v three, but also on split with when he was on Viper and Gambit were making a, a strong comeback and he clutched it up again out of the Viper pit. So I'm not going to go with that match because it's it's too easy. I, I actually, th- th- I'm actually I had a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun watching uh, F4Q versus Sentinels one. I'm uh, in just terms of enjoyment. It wasn't the cleanest match. I think, you know, we had some higher tier play, but it, watching Sentinels have to adapt to a crazy monster on split that is F4Q, and F4Q is probably one of the best split teams in the world. They beat Vision Strikers in the finals on split, so this team is a world-class split team. And watching them have to adapt to Bunny's satchel play, and, and Ryan brought it up earlier, they were, they were diffing the the anchors, the world class, the top of the line, the ace anchors of Sentinels in Dapper and Zoms. Those two players had like six and seven kills each. It really was up to Shazam, Tens and Sick, especially Tens and Shazam, to kind of pull through that 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 split win. And you saw them adapt on the fly, and it was really impressive to see them hold on because playing against a team that different from anyone else in the world, and watching Sentinels have to adapt to that the best team in the world. I thought that was really exciting. Breeze, not so much, but just in terms of a individual per hour, like just an individual performance from tens getting, I believe he had 32 kills in about, you know, half the rounds averaging two kills per round is just nuts, no matter who you are. And I think it just established him again as the best player in the world. You can, you can debate him and Shazam or right now. We'll see by the end of the tournament if another player rises up the ranks, but it was nice that, you know, Tens just kind of coming back in saying, you're talking about CNED, you're talking about Vision Strikers, you're talking about all these great teams, you're talking about Nats, but let me remind you who the MVP of Rekovit was and just kind of put his cards on the table and just wiped away F4Q and Breeze. So I'm going to go with that match, even though obviously 100 Thieves versus Gambit, I think, is the marquee matchup so far. Ryan, what's your favorite match? I, I, I really like Sentinels versus G2. I thought mm. that the memes around it, Kalos is playing and all that stuff. And the fact that we saw Sentinels drop in a map was really mm. interesting at the very least. I didn't expect G2 to win it, but at the very least it was interesting to see Sentinels still bleeding on an international event because they hadn't dropped a map up until then. I think Ascend versus Vision Strikers takes it for mm. me. Like Ascend were dominated, but it was really interesting to see Ascend have that happen to them and i think they'll be all the better for it i think they'll mm. fix a lot of those issues their ideas people are now no longer going to sleep on vision strikers going into playoffs mm. and i think 
seeing Buzz and Mako, the two newer players for Vision Strikers, come in and be god tier on the agents that they're playing, the Jet and the Astra, it was a nice change of pace. And it was really interesting to see players like CNED taken out of the server almost and seeing the send struggle because I think there's a lot they can go back to the, the drawing board with and I think they'll become a better team because of it. That's what you want to see at the very least. You want to see your region do well on an international event that they get hype and try and up the competition or they just get absolutely trounced. They go back and they improve because they've got a fire lit under them. That's what I want to see from Ascended. I think we have done. We've seen them lose in the past and come back stronger. And I think they have a, a group that they can still qualify through. It's going to be either, you know, super massive blaze for one, which is a very scary matchup going on and then obviously paper x who i don't think are going to be too much of a challenge anyway so i'm curious to see how i send you after that all right this one's a bit spicy i, I want a spicy say we, we've had a bit of a few softballs here we, we were kind of playing around your best player favorite map you know some some easy ones but i want to i want to get some hot takes out there i want your 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 hottest take from the first, after the first, you know, midpoint of the turn. I'll, I'll start, I'll, I'll give us off to a start so you kind of can see where it goes. It could be for this turn, it could be a bit beyond. I'm gonna look a bit beyond Berlin. My hot take, which might not be a hot take because, you know, kind of going off Ryan's player of the tournament, my hot take, which I was, I had playing for the day since playing the show was, I think by the time Champions 2021 is over, so, it, by the end of the first world championship, when people are making their top 20 player list, when they're saying who the best player in the world is, I think a hundred these Ethan, Ethan will be consensus top five player in the world. I think by the time champion 2021 ends. So I believe hundred things will be there by the end of that tournament. People will be saying without a shadow of a doubt, just like Shazam, just like tens, just like CNET, if CNET can, you know, have a strong end of this tournament. I think Ethan is going to be up there with those players. I think, when you talk about Shazam, Tens, and, and the excellent Nimie and Vision Striker players, I think Ethan's going to be in that top five. I think right now, uh, us, you know, Upcomer did a top 20 list, so did Sideshow from Plat Chat. I think we both had him around the 10 to 15 range. I think by the end of the World Championship, he's going to be top five, and I don't think there's be a much question about it. Wow, that, that, I, think, I think that is a hot take, actually. That, oh, that's yeah. Kind of, that's kind of surprising, because I think... While he has been really good, I think it's kind of hard to, when you're competing against these like Jet and Reina players on a sky, to put mm. up those numbers. But I, I like that take. <laughs> I, like that take. I, 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 I think my thing is, I think he's fitting into that flex role really well. He picked up Sky a little bit ago. I'm hoping by champions, you know, I, I would love to see him play a Phoenix on Haven like a Sick or a Zeke. I would like to see. I think he's the perfect secondary duelist to Asna. And I think every tournament that Ethan comes into, he looks better and better and better and better. So I think with two months leading into champions, with that time to prepare, you know, Fracture will be into the map pool. We don't even know if Deadeye will be included. Who knows? Who even knows what, you know, Asian class Deadeye is in? Like, I think by the time we get two champions, we go through all that. I think he'll have added more to his arsenal. I just think... Just watching him play versus game it when everyone was failing on a set he was like the one shining light that kept him in that game so i just think ethan's been incredible he's getting better and better he went from you know i think average looking a bit lost in his first few games with 100 thieves to now definitely being a top 15 maybe even top 10 player in the world i think by a champions he'll be top five ryan give me your hot take i don't even know really at this <laughs> point there's so many interesting things i think <laughs> I don't think it's too much of a hot take to say the Vision Strikers and make the final. Mm. I think the take is more if Vision Strikers meet Sentinels in the semis, Vision Strikers wins, oh. is my take. I think that the team that beats Sentinels the first time in an international event will be Vision mm. Strikers. Okay. As an yeah. NA as an NA fan, that 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 intrig the thing is I can see that. Like I, I think it was double elimination bracket. I think like I could see a Vision Strikers beating Sentinel. Sentinel's going to the lowers. You know, Shazam. As they always do. Yeah. yeah Shazam, yeah. like Shazam, <laughs> like figuring out the execute, how to play against, you know, how to beat uh, you know, uh Vision Strikers, you know, uh very innovative lineups. Even on Icebox, they're like a, a map that is so boring and straightforward. Even Vision like, but Vision Striker finds ways to innovate on that map like no other team. Like I think if they had prep against them in real time, got sent to lowers, 
then came back and met them in like the grand finals, I would give it to Sentinels. But I think right now, if it was Sentinels versus Vision Strikers, I would still pick Sentinels just because I feel like they haven't show they haven't turned the the switch on yet. I still think they're kind of playing around with their food a bit. We've seen kind of how they kind of just turned it on versus G2 on Haven and just stopped them and just went up 11 one on a half. And this was like shrugging, playing around for the, you know, the, the defense side of things. So uh, I, I like that take. I like it. It's hot. It's a bit spicy, but I definitely think there's a lot of people agreeing with you. But Danny, what's your hot take? I, I was actually going to say something similar uh, to oh. what Ryan said, because I, well, I, you know, NA can be the best region in Valorant. I am also on the train of, I want to see Sentinels bleed. I want someone to be, oh. them, and I hope it was Vision Strikers, but I'll, I'll come up with a, uh, another hot take. I think yeah. that Hunter Thieves is going to win Berlin. Okay. I, a pa- the pansy. <laughs> You're pulling the pansy. Pansy, <laughs> yeah. also, pansy yeah, predicted pansy. Hunter. Yeah. Yeah. Treya. <laughs> yeah. She picked Hunter Thieves. <laughs> It looks yeah. good. I'm, she has I'm, taken Noel so far. I'm I'm with her all the way. I think Gambit was kind of their their test of mm-hmm. okay, if you are in literal backs against the wall situation, can you overcome it? And they showed that yes, we can. And like I said before, I think that LAN experience is just going to come in handy for them. And yeah, sure, Sentinels won Masters two. They have the LAN experience. They've been a team for as long as you know. They've had tens, months, and months. But I think, I think Hundred Thieves now has the mental fortitude that they know they can overcome a team like Gambit. That I think they win Berlin. It's going to be close if they come against Sentinels, though. I, I like it. I, I definitely, I definitely think the one thing I think all three of us can agree upon is that this is a close race. I think be it be a Sentinels, a Vision Strikers, a Hundred Thieves, a Gambit fan, I feel like there's different stylistic matchups that could differ. And I think like a team like Ascend, right, who just got bopped by Vision Strikers, I could definitely see them. You know, getting that second seed, beating Supermassive Blaze again, and just going straight to the final and winning it all. Like, I definitely think they're the type of team that's not going to cry about losing the Vision Strikers, and it's just going to make them better. Because I think all these teams are advancing so quickly, and I think when you're playing against all these world-class teams at the highest pressured event, you're going to see the teams evolve faster. So I think that's the most fun thing about Berlin. I think looking at Reykjavik, it was very straightforward who is going to be the best teams. New turn, even though they looked really good, they couldn't play Haven at all, which made them not fine. Like they could, they could never win just because they had one map that they could not like. They couldn't play Icebox and they couldn't play Haven, so they were kind of screwed in a best of five situation with the map pool situation with no breeze back then. Uh, I, I don't think that's the case back he, uh, here, where I think Sentinels back in Reykjavik were just a tier above everyone else. I think Sentinels, if they played that, they're absolute peak might still have a that tier above but i think teams like vision strikers are getting on them fast gambit's going to gain on them fast if they can learn composure right like if ryan says if they can stop pulling those gambit things and play like scrim gambit they might be the best team in the world i think that's what's the most exciting about berlin so far is that it feels very competitive it feels like going in the playoffs we're going to have five or six teams that have a, a legitimate shot of taking it all all right, guys, we have made it to the end of our mid-tournament special, our hot takes, our reactions, our superlatives. But I got to we, we, we got to make a point right here. We got to make a stand. All of us have to make a prediction right here, right now. Who's going to win Berlin and who's going to be the finals MVP? I think, Danny, you've already said yours. You said 100 Thieves. You're going to stand by that. Hopefully, I mean, you know, hopefully you'll stand by that. And But if 100 Thieves does win, let's say they do win it all, who's going to be the finals MVP? Who's going to be the most integral part of that team winning, you know, Berlin? I think, honestly, anyone on 100 Thieves could really get the role. I mean, the, you have everyone on 100 Thieves at some point in time are – popping off and just doing these crazy things. But I think just from this tournament alone, it's got to be Hiko. I mean, he is the clutch master for a reason. He literally pulled 100 Thieves back himself uh, with Gambit. So I think if they do win it all, it's got to be Hiko for his clutch ability, for his, you know, his, his veteran leadership on the team and just being able to keep his team in the game. Win those rounds, Ray. Like the he his stats might not scream finals MVP, but if you actually watch the games, it's like 
he wins those one or two rounds that changes the entire matchup. Like he wins those momentum shifting rounds where it's the one V three, the one V two, where if they lose that round, their economy is broke. They're screwed for two to three rounds. The game is just essentially over, but he wins those entangle rounds over and over and over again. It's at a clip now where it's not even crazy. It's just, you kind of expect it when it's a one V three and the, the game is on the line, you kind of expect him to come up big. So I, I can definitely see that happen. I can, if Hunter Thieves wins, I, we're going to see more of those Hiko clutch moments. So I think that's a pretty great pick. Ryan, are you gonna are are you still on the EMA copium, or are you going to go full Vision Strikers in your finals prediction? I think, I think I still have Sentinels to win it. I All think right. that they're going to be like on opposite sides of the bracket from Vision Strikers. It really because it, it's completely random. It really could go in any direction. Really, we could <laughs> see like Vision Strikers playing Gambit in the first qualifying game, and then maybe Gambit just are the kryptonite to how Vision Strikers play. Yeah. I do think the Vision Strikers are going to make it quite far, and I I think that Lackier might get like the tournament MVP, mm. which is funny because he's not even played yet. I I just think that he is a, a world class player that has done all of this before. He plays lands on the regular in Seoul for just the normal Korean challenges. It's not on a land server, but it's in a studio. It's facing your opponents. Uh, in your sort of land desks, I guess you could call it. So I think that there's going to be a play for Vision Strikers. Lackey can come in and certainly impress. But I think either that or Buzz. I think Buzz has been the best jet that we've seen in this tournament so far. And considering you have Tens and CNED here and Forsaken, I think that's a really good testament to some of the talent coming out of the woodwork in Korea. All right, you guys picked my two. I mean, you picked my NA Copium answers, Sentinels and 100 Thieves, so I'm not going to answer them. I'll be a bit spicier. I'm not going to pick Vision Strikers either. Ryan, I- I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to eat some of that Ian Copium for you. I'm going to, I'm going to, Ian Sue's not here, so I have to, I have to make her proud, right? So even though in the heart of hearts, the brain is telling me Sentinels, the heart's telling me 100 Thieves, since you guys said those answers, I'm, I'm going to say Gambit. I think Gambit looked like the scariest team I've ever seen the first map and a half they played against 100 Thieves. They looked unbeatable they look like the iron wall that you know i called them in my preview article the best defensive team in the world a team that when defo is on when defo can hit those shots on attack and he can open the rounds with that first kill what he can look like a yay or tens and open the round with a kill on attack they're unbeatable right like they just are so systematically oppressive and just eat teams alive it was scary watching them play 100 thieves and 100 thieves were playing well on ascent in my belief like they were hitting some crazy shots ethan was playing out of his mind but it wasn't enough then obviously on icebox they're crushing again and then everything just flips and they can't get control the experience of 100 thieves just wins out i think gambit will learn a lot from that loss i think there are a lot of young players being on land for the first time I think 100 Thieves or Sentinels will win, but for Yinsu, for the show, for her doing a great job hosting, <laughs> I'm going to say Gambit wins. I think finals MVP. I'm, I'm going to give it Defo. In this world where Gambit wins the, the entire thing, I think Defo has to be at his best. He has to be that ace player. He has to be the player, the tip of the spear, like an Austin, like a Heat, like a Yay, like a Tens, like a, a CNED, like, you know, a Buzz who's been playing out of his mind. Like you said, it's really hard to win this tournament when you don't have your ace jet player playing like an ace jet player. And we saw yeah. the kind of Jekyll and Mr. Hyde of Defo in that series where, you know, Nats is always a pop off. Nats is a genius. I think everyone can say that Nats is one of the smartest and just best players in the world. The real drop off in that series was Shados and Defo, the, the two attacking players, the, the duos duo, the, the kind of the core carries of the team. And I think Shados is going to get his kill. Shados, Chronicle, they're going to put in the work. But for me, if they're going to win this all, if, if Gambit's going to win it all, Defo has to be the MVP. So in this in this world, I'm going to say Gambit beats Sentinels in the finals, 3-2. Uh, the anti-Rocky ending, Drago's going to knock <laughs> out yeah, yeah. Rocky. He will, bre- he will break the hearts of all. I will cry. This prediction will make me cry. It's going to be 3-2. Defo is going to win MVP. Russia is going to go into champions as, you know, the number one seed. And that's my prediction because you guys took all the NA copium. So I have yeah. to give some, I have to give something to the EMA fans. Like it's been a pretty rough few days, like Ryan said. So don't, don't, don't overlook Gambit. I think Gambit at their best is 
they are as scary as Sentinels at their best. And it, I just think, I just think Sentinels have a, they're just more consistent. And I think if mm. Gambit can find that juice, if they can find that blend and not choke, and it, let's be honest, they choked versus Hunter Thieves. They should have won that series. I think they could be the best team in the world. So Gambit, Hunter Thieves, uh, Sentinels, Vision Strikers, even Envy, if Ye starts picking things up, Ascend, Supermassive Blaze, all these teams are so, so good. And I'm very, very excited to see how it ends. But guys, that's all we have today for our special episode. Ryan, Danny, thank you for joining us. Yep. Good to be here. <laughs> I'm, I hope it doesn't get worse for EMEA is all I can say. No, NA, copy them <laughs> all the way. <laughs> I mean, NA is is looking like they're going to get three number one seeds out of groups, which has never happened in a million years in League of Legends. So I'm going yeah. to cherish <laughs> yeah, it. Never. Look, at, Worlds is coming very soon, so I'm going to cherish this for all that it has with, with, with NA being by far the best region in the group stages. I'm just going to cherish this moment. We'll see how the playoffs end out, though. But as always, please like and subscribe. Put in the comment section who you think will win VCT Masters Berlin. Also, go cheer on Yinsu as she hosts the rest of the event. But we will be back next week for me, for Ryan, for Danny. This was a Comers Showstopper. Bang. <laughs>